Let us pray. Heavenly Father, from the words of your text to the hearts of our bodies, may you speak to us. Holy Spirit, come and overshadow us as you did with Mary. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And he will crush your head. And you will build an ark. And I will deliver my people. I will establish his throne forever. And I will save a remnant. These are the words of God throughout the ages. God has often spoken to his people and declared what will happen. God's word does not come back void. When God says something, it happens. God often tells us the what, but rarely does he tell us the how. God often tells us the what, but he rarely tells us the how. And we see that this morning in today's reading. And as Father Jose said, those who dare to hear, let them open their ears to hear. You know who I envy most as I get older? Children. A child is one I envy. Honest. Because a child has something that I often lose track of. Simple faith. There's an innocence to a child. I speak of my own child, but you have children possibly. And when I speak to Sebastian, he believes in God. We pray, and he prays to Jesus. And when we look to Scripture at times, he doesn't question how. Because for him, all things are possible with God. He hasn't allowed the world to corrupt that innocent childlike faith that Jesus spoke of so often. No, as we get older and we get mature, we think those are things for children too playful. We need to become adults and mature and think rationally and put childish things away. But I think we lose something. We seek intelligence and sophistication, but it's no, what God wants is a simple, basic, childlike faith. That doesn't mean we can't reason when those who don't believe and argue, no, there's a place for that. But for us who have declared, for us who have accepted that Jesus is Lord, we shall maintain and should maintain a childlike faith. When God says something in his holy word, we should believe it. The what we should accept 
The how, we often don't know. Here we have a story of the Blessed Mary, who for the first time hears the revelation given to her about her son being born, but not just the son, the son of the Most High God. And she believes. But to truly appreciate her belief, we must see what took place just pages before. You see, prior to this appearance of the angel Gabriel, he also appeared to Zechariah the priest. And there, Zechariah, a very well-known priest from the priesthood division of Obijah, which goes back centuries. Here is a man in Jerusalem, in the temple, with great status, aged and seasoned, who when he is told the Holy Spirit will come upon this child of him, his son, John, that his wife will bear who is barren, he lacks faith. He questions Gabriel, how can this be? My wife, Elizabeth, she is in age. She is past that time, that period. How can she give birth to a child? And because of his lack of belief, he is mute for nine months. And now you contrast that with this teenage girl, a virgin, must have been a teenage girl, an insignificant girl, no one knew her. She isn't connected to anyone. We know her father, Heli, but not to that extent. And she is in an insignificant place like Nazareth, not Jerusalem. She's in an insignificant place in a home, not the temple. Yet when she hears from the angel, she believes. Now you say, well, Father Asser, it says here that she questioned, how can this be? I am a virgin. True. But once she is told that this will take place by the power of the Holy Spirit, she does not doubt. She believes. Contrast that to Zechariah. He was told that the Holy Spirit would be upon his child before he asked how can this be? Here you have a young girl, insignificant in comparison to Zechariah and others, yet she has more faith than him. And here we also see in the back, in the shadow of Sarah, the wife of the father of our faith, Abraham. Abraham who when she was told at her old age at 90 that she would give birth and through his offspring, her offspring, the nations would be blessed, she laughed. A 90-year-old woman who God called her husband to go into the land where their people would dwell, laughed. And yet here is this mother who's only a teenager. This Mary, she believed. The scripture tells us here, O oh, favored one. I believe she was favored because she had that faith. She believed 
And she loved the Lord with all her heart, with all her mind, with all her soul. God would not choose someone to bear the Savior of the world if she did not love the Lord God. And her words at the end, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. We find those words in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus says to his father, let it be, not my will, but yours. How many of us have that childlike faith? How many of us question and toss and turn at night when God either speaks to us or is silent and we begin to doubt and we look at our circumstances and we are overwhelmed by what we see and we silence the things that we ought to believe. Here, Mary is told that her son will be great, yes, and that God will give him the throne of his father David, and that his kingdom will have no end. She is told the what about her son. What is he going to be? She believes. But she's not told how he's going to become king. I think the Lord here kept that mystery for many reasons. But first and foremost, to a mother, a parent. Who would want to know that their son would have to endure so much to become king? God comes to us with good news. He doesn't want to crush our spirit. He tells us the what. He doesn't tell us the how. He told her that he would be great, that he is the son of God, and his kingdom will have no end. But he didn't tell her that he would be betrayed, that he would be sold for 30 shekels of gold, that he would be crucified on a cross, mocked and humiliated, and seen for all of Jerusalem as a laughingstock in their eyes as his body would be tortured and his blood would be shed. No. God did not tell Mary the how. He only told her the what. In fact, John the Baptist himself, 33 years later, didn't know the how. He said, there is the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. But he too did not know how. It wasn't until that day on Caesarea Philippi when Jesus said, Who do the people say that I am? And Peter eventually says, You are the Christ. And it is at that moment when Jesus himself for the first time, reveals to his disciples, and very soon later, his mother will find out how he will become the king of kings. For 33 years, it was kept a secret in the mind of God of how he would become king. But God's word is not void. In our lives, God tells us the same. He tells us, go and be. He doesn't tell us how that's going to take place. If you're just about to enter ministry, and Father Jose can think of this, Go. You will become one of my priests. 
and share my good news with those near and far. He doesn't tell us the how. How hard it's going to be. How much you have to endure. How taxing it will be on you and possibly your family. Because if we're told the how, we might not just do the what. You see, God keeps much of that for our own benefit. He knows us better than ourselves. Go and get married. He puts that in your heart. He might not tell you how hard it will be. And that applies to anything in our lives. When God calls us and sends us somewhere and asks us to do something, and he says, I will be with you. Pursue that dream. Go to that school. Speak to that person. He doesn't tell us how it will play out. And here there's a mother. He doesn't want to crush her. The love a mother has for their child is beyond anything that we could relate with as men. But as a parent, we can understand. Or being a child, having a parent, their love for us. But Mary, this young teenage girl, believed. She believed. She believed like a young girl, a child, simple faith, How many of us believe in God? Right now, it's a very hard time to believe in good things. An Advent season that celebrates hope, peace, joy, and love in a time where there's so much turmoil, heaviness, death, sickness, division, unrest, how is it that we can believe in a good God, in a loving God, in a time such like this? As the, Gab as the angel Gabriel said, for nothing will be impossible with God. We will get past these days we are also the favored ones of God. And the Holy Spirit has come upon us too. And if it hasn't yet, I ask you this morning to open up your heart and receive the Holy Spirit. And the Lord God, the God of the Most High, will overshadow you. And all things will be possible through Him. Him. No one else. And there is where you find love, true love, because love will endure. Our God loves us so much that he didn't even spare his one and only son. And so if he has told you this day to go, to do, to believe, to pursue, go. Do it. Don't doubt it. Do not doubt it. Replace that doubt with faith this morning, my dear friend. Have the faith of this young teenage girl. We don't know the how, but we can trust the one who sends us will provide the way.
Do you envy children as I do? They believe in God. They believe in Jesus. They believe in his word. Because for them, all things are possible. May Christ's love reign with you, in you, always and everywhere you go. And may this Advent season be one where we reset all things and await the birth of the Savior of the world who comes and becomes king. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, replace our doubt with faith. Thank you for keeping the how. But instruct us with what you ask us to do or become. And may we trust you, Lord, each step of the way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.